Come one, come all to the poop show that is Reddit. And today we will be taking a page out of Coop Noop's book and exploring the subreddit, Am I Overreacting? I have five delectable stories for you from the Am I Overreacting subreddit that we'll go through. With respect to Coop Noop for giving me the idea, he's a great YouTuber, I highly suggest you check him out. But without further ado, let's get right into the first one, which is, Am I Overreacting? My boyfriend doesn't wash his hands. Yesterday I noticed my boyfriend did not wash his hands after using the bathroom. Number two. I joked about him forgetting it and then asked him how often he doesn't wash his hands. He told me he never washes his hands after the bathroom. Never. After I realized he wasn't joking, I told him how disgusting that was, that he just goes around with unwashed hands. He told me he'd start washing his hands, but I still feel pretty turned off because he touched my face, my food, my body with unwashed hands. Do I try to forget about it? I'm pretty mad because I've gotten reoccurring urinary infections while with him, which could be caused by his dirty hands. Now, right off the bat, let's just say that he wasn't doing number two when he used the bathroom. Let's just say he went number one to keep things PG. That is not too uncommon. Not for me. I always wash my hands after using the bathroom. At my school, I am shocked at the amount of people that just walk up to the urinal, do their business, and then walk right out without even rinsing their hands rinse your hands so something anything nope just me okay fine but now you introduce the factor of it's 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 not number one that he's doing it's number two now that's a big problem in fact i'm pretty sure that's how polio started i might be getting my sources wrong but i'm pretty sure it's because people with poo poo hands would touch food and then consume that and now we have the polio vaccine for that i went to a sushi place with my wife and had to use the bathroom it was one of those restaurants where there's only one bathroom with one toilet in it so you just kind of stand in line in the hallway but there was no one standing in line so I walked up, tried the door, door was locked. Someone was in there. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll wait in line. So I'm standing there and I can hear whoever is inside is on their phone. I can only imagine that they're sitting there watching something while doing their business. Totally fine, we all do that. But then I grow concerned as I hear whoever is in there flush the toilet and a second later open up the door. There was no time in between flushing the toilet and opening up the door and I did not hear any faucet turn on. On. There's just no way they wash their hands in any of that. So this guy walks out and I'm like, okay, that's pretty gross. So he walks away and I'm like, okay, whatever. I walk in, I'm like thinking that's absolutely disgusting. I do my business, walk out, sit down at the table and I look straight in front of me and the man who came out of the bathroom and didn't wash his hands was behind the counter chopping up my sushi. Yes, he was a worker at the sushi place and he was cooking the meal I was about to eat with his unwashed hands. Now, I was in a state of I didn't know what to do. It was a very bad situation and I was the only one who knew that he didn't wash his hands. The next post is, my partner pees in the pool while standing outside of the pool. Am I overreacting? My partner, 53 male, pees in our pool like it's a toilet. For example, he will take a break from watching TV or something and walk outside and pee in it and then walk back in. I was gobsmacked when I saw him do it for the first time and told him I thought it was disgusting and asked him to never do it again. He says that the pool is full of chemicals and it gets so diluted in all the thousands of gallons of water that it doesn't make a difference. I understand it's normal for people to pee in the pool when they are swimming. I myself do it occasionally. Hmm. Pause. But to me, standing outside of the pool and peeing into it is different, it's trashy and gross. He continues to do it occasionally and I always tell him I think it's gross, it's a turn off and I ask that he stops. I find it interesting how different subreddits will feature posts about people asking like the most bonehead questions like my boyfriend hasn't eaten in seven days and I tell him I think he's gonna starve and he tells me he's fine. Am I overreacting or do you guys think he's gonna die? Like I don't know what to say to you. Have you not lived life at all? Like have you not been around people? Do you not understand how the world World works for this situation you don't need a therapist you don't need a professional even though I will put on my glasses therapist animal fries here um, at your service you are not overreacting pee does not belong in a pool pee belongs in your toilet that's why people make toilets for peeing in and swimming pools for swimming in imagine swimming in a toilet maybe you get hit by a shrink ray or you turn into ant-man or something and you shrink up really small and you go swimming around in your toilet bowl would you feel comfortable 
comfortable with that? And if the answer is yes, then you are probably the partner who peed in the pool. And if the answer is no for 99.99% .99 of you, then don't pee in the pool. It's not okay. It makes me a little concerned how she said that she understands it's normal for people to pee in the pool when they are swimming. She herself does it occasionally. What are you thinking? I will never swim with you in my whole life knowing that information. I think you are part of the problem. You are part of that 0.001% of people that would swim in the toilet bowl. We'll be going in ascending order of craziness, so buckle up, things are about to get insane. Am I overreacting? Subway wanting free labor. Hi, thank you for coming in for the interview on Saturday. I would like to invite you in for a trial shift on Wednesday, whatever the date. Please reply to this email to confirm kind regards. Hi there, thank you for getting back to me. I'm very pleased to hear I've been invited to the next stage of hiring. If you don't mind my asking, please could you remind me whether or not this trial shift is paid and at what rate please? Looking forward to meeting the team. Many thanks and kind regards. Hi, unfortunately all trial shifts are not paid for. I am unsure of the rate of pay for a sandwich artist as the rates have recently changed. I will know tomorrow once my manager is back in the country. Hope this is okay. Hi, as I'm sure you've probably heard from other applicants, four hours is essentially half a day's work and asking a qualified job seeker for unpaid labor for that length of time with no guarantee of a position afterwards is exploitive and unethical, especially as this is a minimum wage position. Friends of mine have experienced restaurants using unpaid trials as cheap cover for being short staffed, but regardless of whether or not this is the case for yourselves is very disappointing and a predatory business practice. Thank you for your time, but I must decline your offer and implore you to amend your hiring strategy going forward. It doesn't make sense to me for Subway to be telling this person, hey, we want you to come here, make some sandwiches, and then leave and no pay for you because you made us some sandwiches, but you know, maybe we'll agree to something at the end of the day. Like, hang on a second. I want to be paid for my work. I made like five people sandwiches. Like, wh what are we doing here? Honestly, it kind of makes sense for Subway because their subs are so freaking expensive and very overrated. They give you like two slices of meat on your sandwich, cut it in half, give it to you. A foot long for Subway is like six inches in real life. So honestly, Subway, just step aside. Like if you really want to go get a good job, somewhere if you want to get a good sandwich go to like jersey mics or something that those subs are actually good there's definitely a jump up from the last post to this post things get even more crazy am i overreacting my wife acted like she was single to get into a party i really need to put on my glasses for this one I need to take out my inner therapist and just figure out what the heck is going on here i trust my wife but yesterday she did something i really didn't like she went yesterday to a bar with a girlfriend that visited her from another country sir good sir i am concerned for for you on many levels you allowed your wife to go to a bar by herself i mean with a friend but essentially by herself not a friend that you know not with you you're not dropping her off and picking her up good sir that is where the problems of this whole situation begin let's continue i told her to enjoy the time and i will go to sleep very sweet man the next morning i wake up and notice she doesn't have her whatsapp profile picture which is a picture of me with her and i ask her why she didn't have it she told me that some guy told told her that he will get her and her friend a free entry to a club and that he just needed her number to call her. I'm sorry for you. I feel pity for you. But at the same time, I don't because you have let your wife go out of control. This doesn't even sound like a marriage. This sounds like you know a friend who you're mildly interested in and she just happens to be partying every night and she, you're like, wow, she's a party girl. I'm kind of interested in her. Not she's your wife. So not only did she go to a bar, but she went to a club. She decided to delete her profile pic with which had you on it, like for what? Well, let's keep reading. He's about to explain why. She thought it would be a hood idea, and I think he means good, but hood would probably work too, to remove her picture with me just to appear single and get the entrance, get to the entrance, get inside. By the way, we are on a long distance, and I, I'm assuming he means we're, on a, we're in a long distance relationship. Edit, I talked to her about how I felt, and she told me that she was just doing it to give her female friend an amazing experience in the US. I also asked her if she was cheating. She said no and then said that it was wild that I am asking her that. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, husband, husband, husband. Here's here's the deal. I'm going to go to a bar and get drunk with my friend. Then we're going to go clubbing. And this guy asked for my number. I didn't want him to know that I was married. So I removed my profile pic. But you're accusing me of cheating? How could you even think? 
Second edit. She told me that she left her ring in her house because she forgot. I'm trying to get rid of this thing that could potentially buffer you or stop you or prevent you from having a very good time with someone who isn't your husband. She, my friend, is not just cheating on you. She's been cheating on you for a long time. Therapist Animal Fries here. He's prescribing you um a new wife. The next post and our last post is am I overreacting to my partner forcing a hug? And you'll see the text messages here. I'm sorry for all my behavior. I was uncalled for. I was in the wrong. I'm sorry. You are entirely right and justified for your emotions and feelings. I should push myself aside and help you. I should have left when you told me to the first time. Entirely validated to not feeling safe. What I did was wrong. The hug has already occurred, whatever hug that we're about to find out about, and the partner is now apologizing for his or her actions. I'm sorry for acting out. I'm sorry for drinking the ibuprofen. Sorry for drinking the ibuprofen? Huh? What? My life is not your responsibility and I wish to move forward with us. This person definitely wants to keep up in this relationship, but let's see how serious was that hug in the first place. You scared me. I know. I'm sorry. I honestly don't understand what the heck happened. I took bad advice from someone. I did something wrong. I should have never touched you, never tried to hold you. I'm sorry. You can try, but once I said no and not to is when it wasn't okay. I know. I shouldn't have to pry you off of me yelling how it hurts and isn't okay and to please let me go. At any point, you could have stopped. I mean, I've never hugged anyone and just like kept hugging them and squeezing them until it hurt. Like that is like some psychotic behavior or something. I don't really know. And then the person is yelling at you, trying to push you off and you're just, you just keep hugging them. Like, are you okay? Take it easy. I know. I'm in pain currently because of it. I'm sure. I tried really hard to get you off me. I'm sorry. I hurt so much. Everything is sore, but my wrist especially is killing me. I'm sorry. It will never happen again. Maybe the person who did the hug was, you know, like, oh, I want to just give you a big bear hug. I love you so much. And the other person was like, oh, I don't know. Like, come on, stop. Oh, no, I just love you so much. Stop, stop, stop. And then that's kind of what happened. And it wasn't that big of a deal. And then, you know, they can just go on their merry way. It'll never happen again. Okay, I forgive you. And then that's it or and that's where I put my glasses on or this person who gave the hug was very intentional went up and very lethally like a practiced assassin squeezed the ever-living daylights out of their partner and just kept squeezing them like like they were putting someone in a chokehold I don't know if I can come back from this I know you broke my trust cheating broke my trust in being there for me the night before I left for my grandma's memorial and now my trust in my family physical safety far more serious than anything I could have ever imagined so this person cheated on you was either there or not there the night of your grandma's memorial or something I'm not entirely sure about that and then squeeze you almost to death hmm uh okay let's keep reading I guess I know I am at work right now calling out if you want to talk in person I don't understand like I honestly truly do not feel safe with you right now understandable that's what I said but they said I understand I just can't believe you wouldn't let go when I was telling you how it hurt and you said I was the one making it hurt like what the heck I know. I have a right to not be touched. I know. Can you say anything else? I know. I know. Like a parrot or something. I know. Like a broken record. Can you please just shut up? And I'm not going to go through the rest of it. That's about half of the whole conversation. I might show the rest of the text here if you want to look through them really fast. There's a whole bunch of talking over each other and fighting. And then the one person wants to take their stuff out of the other person's house and leave. And they're not going to see each other again. And it's honestly kind of depressing. But I think it's just kind of crazy how it got to this point in in the first place like for both people like the one person why would you cheat and why would you squeeze someone so hard that they're actually like genuinely afraid for their life for the other person why would you stay with someone after cheating like that's what i don't understand like, i sincerely thank you for watching this video and i humbly ask that you consider subscribing liking commenting the fact that you enjoyed this video and you watched to this point is enough for me i really appreciate you sticking all the way to the end watching my video they like I can't believe that people actually watch me it, it makes therapist animal fries cry a little bit on the inside out of joy so anyways thank you so much for watching and I will uh, see you later